of all the various semi-older guys on the roster who look like they might just might have a chance to stick, Michael Chavis is by far, to me, the most intriguing. Good morning to you. Good Friday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. Comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer Daily Shots of Steelers and Penguins where you found this. Pirates 8, Cubs 7 in the 10th inning. I was over there covering for DK Pittsburgh Sports. Have a full column up that I hope you can check out on the website. And they're probably wasn't anyone on the field from either side who played a bigger role in the outcome than Chavis did. And all of it was late, as Derek Shelton would joke later on that Chavis had maybe 25 of the best minutes he'd seen all season. Chavis hit the tying home run in the eighth inning after the Cubs had overtaken the Pirates. Pirates blew a 6-2 lead. But Chavis made it 7-7. Then out in the field, Chavis makes an outstanding decision. And then an outstanding play, throwing out a runner at home, going against his body after backhanding a bouncer. Really, really well done. And then the 10th inning comes along. Brian Hayes is the automatic runner. At second base, Brian Reynolds is intentionally walked. A little bit of a show of disrespect for Chavis, although I actually kind of find that to be sound strategy, meaning, you know, putting the guy on, hoping for the double play, especially if, you know, he's Reynolds in this lineup and as hot as Reynolds has been. But Chavis reaches out and pokes what looks like a pop-up off the bat, but you can see that it's going to fall into no man's land in right field. Hayes is going the whole time. Collision at the plate. Hayes slides head first, makes it in. And that's like kind of a hat trick for this guy. And he's been a good player. He's also been a good citizen. I'm sure you can gather that just from his intonation in his interviews. Really, really outgoing and genuinely so. Listen to some of him uh, and his enthusiasm after this game. It's exciting. You know, I, I love playing baseball. And those are those moments you kind of dream of. And you, uh, it's funny. Like, there's been so many moments where I've been uh, preparing to go up to bat or up to bat. You know, you think about trying to create that. And, of course, in this, in this opportunity, um, I didn't try to hit a home run. I'm just trying to get a single. And I'm trying to be, like, team-oriented. You know, like, just get on base, have somebody, pass the bat to somebody else. And, of course, the one that time when you're not trying to do it, it does show up that way. So, I mean, that's kind of how God works in my life. Whenever I try to make something happen, he's like, no, it's not the plan. But um, that's, just, that's just typical for my life. So, uh, it all, I'm glad it all worked out. And what you can't hear there is that He'll stand there at his stall and hold court like all day. The guy really, really enjoys the microphones and the cameras. In general, and on a lot of levels, he feels like the kind of guy you'd want to keep around. But how realistic and worth it is that? This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern. That's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800-degree stone, and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. Now, Chavis is 26 years old. He's going to turn 27 in early August. Any reasonable outlook on this team's future would suggest to you that that's kind of a tough mix. It's not impossible. It's not unthinkable, especially if you're a pitcher. And when you couple Chavis' performance this season, and it's it's modest. He, you know, he's a 256 hitter. Uh, with uh, six home runs, including the one yesterday, in semi-limited time. He hasn't been a star, but he's been good. And in a year where most of the offense has been anything but good, maybe he stands out a little more than he should. And the same goes for his defense. He's a five foot ten first baseman. 
That's never ideal. But he comes with pedigree. He was a first-round pick of the Red Sox in 2014. He'd probably be affordable moving forward, even if he continues to hit at this reasonable pace. He's eligible for arbitration for the first time in 2023, and that's an area where most general managers, not just Ben Charrington or someone working for another low payroll team, would be really careful about spending. But it automatically takes you from a range like the one Chavis is in now because he's what's called a zero to three player, meaning in his first three years, he makes at or close to the big league minimum. He'd then be moving into probably something like two million, even three million. I'm probably going a little high on that, but you know, if you see him as a role player, if you see him as someone who can move around the diamond a little bit, and he can, he can. There's a lot of positions he can play, and you like what he brings to your team, not just from the production standpoint, but from the intangible standpoint then maybe you think about it. That's one of those calls that has to involve uh, the coaching staff because you want to know, hey, what kind of an impact, if any, does he have on this room? How much has he helped younger players, even younger players who might arrive to take his job? Because that's ultimately what's probably the optimal outcome. Think of it this way. If Mason Martin were to start hitting again in Indy, and it's been a while since he has, for anybody who hasn't checked in with that, if he were to start hitting and start sending a bunch of home runs over the fences down in AAA, that whole call would be renewed. Get him up here. Get him up here. He hits home runs. He hits home runs. Well, he also profiles and looks like a first baseman. He's a pretty good defensive guy, too. All that he's a lefty, and you know, playing at PNC Park and everything else, it looks like it would be something that you'd want to have happen in 2022, even if it was just for a piece of the calendar year. Well, Chavis, you know, you would just move him somewhere. You'd say, "Hey, man, you you look like you could be a a really useful utility slash bench guy for us." In which case, you could pay him the same way and around the same rate that you did. Ben Gamble. I, I don't mean to rain on. I, I, I realize now as I'm talking that that's what this sounds like. He's been a good player. I hope he does get an arbitration contract. I wouldn't mind if he got an arbitration contract in Pittsburgh as long as it came in the right overall context, as long as it made sense. I don't know that he's a starter. I don't know that he profiles as that on a team that's, you know, better than this one. So, you know, maybe you can just kind of move him where he's going to go. When we come back, J1Q. back time for j1q today's comes from brian crossman and brian's is more of a a a sentiment that's expressed and and one that i feel might sum up the week that just passed pretty nicely for some of you Uh, brian says what i notice about this team is that they have ball players guys who play offense defense make plays getting dirty kind of players fans want to cheer for Jack Sawinski almost robbing a home run until the left field wall violently knocked the ball loose. That was in yesterday's game. Uh, Michael Chavis making a leaping throw to cut down a lead run in the 10th. I just described that in the opening segment. And O'Neill Cruz coming along and doing what he does. Yeah, Brian, man, it's, it's different. You know, it's different. First of all, just having this level of talent at hand, this level of uh, potential that's real. Do you remember the episode a couple of weeks ago, whenever things started getting decent and fun and whatever else here, and I said, somewhat tongue-in-cheek, don't dare call this team scrappy. 
Because Scrappy is, well, it's Chavis, okay? Scrappy is Chavis. He can do some things, but there are limitations to what he can do. And the way that he compensates for it is the whole heart and soul thing. Now, what you're talking about, and the reason I like this entry, is that you looked at their talented players. I mean, you mentioned Chavis, and I'm sure you weren't making any exclusions, but when you talk about the talented players making the extra effort, doing whatever it takes to win a game, to me, Kebrian Hayes going into home plate head first, as ill-advised as that was, and I'd find out later when I asked Derek Shelton that he actually doesn't approve of that type of slide, really in any circumstance. But in that moment, Key has the sense that if he gets his hand in there, he's got a better chance of making contact with home plate. So he throws logic out the window. He sees Wilson Contreras is there. Contreras is depending on your point of view, either legally or illegally, blocking the plate, and Key doesn't care. And he just goes in there and just wants to win the game. If that means hurting his hand, hurting his wrist, ending his season, he's going to try to win the game. I asked David Bednar, since Key wasn't available uh, due to his injury, I asked Bednar what he thought of that moment in watching Key make that play. When you see him diving in like that no, he's, to win awesome. the game. It's awesome. I mean, that tells you everything you need to know. I mean, guys are going to make mistakes at times, but you know what? Whenever you're playing hard, that you, you live with that. I, mean, I think we got a lot of guys that want to play, play to win, play hard. So I think that's, uh, you know, good things happen with that. That's it. This isn't that complicated. You know, if you have talent and you have a will to win, there's a way. And I feel like that's the thing that's got people the most excited. It isn't the W's. It isn't the results. It's watching this freak of nature shortstop in particular do these insane things on the field that you know that other humans can't do. But it's also watching Jack uh, take three balls out of the yard in the same game on Father's Day and stuff like that, where you just know that there's something more there, that it's not scrappiness. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Pirates today, all week long, and we'll be back with a whole nother round of these next Monday. <laughs>